Okay, so there's this manga called Bastard. With two exclamation points, by the way, so maybe it's appropriate to call it BASTARD! And I really don't know how to even begin to describe this manga. This is by far one of the strangest, most confusing, and perverted mangas that I have ever read, and I did not expect one bit of anything that happened in it. Let me just put you into my mindset here, okay? The only thing I knew about Bastard before starting it was that it was a dark fantasy manga. You know, taking place in a medieval-style world alongside mythological creatures, monsters, dragons, castles, all that fun stuff. A little bit like Dungeons & Dragons, a little bit like Berserk. Yeah, that's what I was going to expect, right? No, 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 not at all. Also, I had seen some of the images of the artwork, and my god, the artwork of this manga is simply jaw-dropping. It's incredible, especially during the latter half of this manga. The double page spreads and the detail within this fantastical world and these fantastical beings are on a different level, like seriously some of the most amazing artwork that I've ever seen. So I figure, okay, I have this amazing artwork within this dark fantasy framework, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> everything. Everything went wrong. It's going to be nearly impossible to explain this manga without spoilers, but I'm going to try my best. So if you want to go in knowing absolutely nothing, maybe save this video for later, but I'm just going to give you the general gist of the plot and outline just to be able to understand what I'm talking about here. But first, the initial premise of this manga places us within this medieval setting, and we have some warring nations and kingdoms all named after 80s metal bands like Iron Maiden and Metallica and so on. In fact, even a lot of the special magical moves and attacks and character stuff is also named from metal and rock bands. I think Deep Purple was the name of one of the attacks that kind of looked like a Kamehameha. So everything sort of has this medieval heavy metal vibe to it, which I totally am down with. But what we basically find out is that the main character of this story, who is the most powerful sorcerer of all time, and was a complete danger to everyone he came in contact with, has been infused into the body of a young boy named Luce. But once the threats start barreling down upon the humans and kingdoms, they have no choice but to unleash the sorcerer from his human prison, which can only be done by the kiss of a virgin. I mean, okay, needing purity and virginity for rituals and spells isn't anything new to storytelling. A little weird when the virgin that kisses the underage boy is also his adopted sister Yoko, but again, uh, okay. And then with that kiss, the boy is transformed into our main character, motherfucking Dark Schneider. And Dark Schneider is kind of like if you took Inuyasha but made him very R-rated, and then also splashed in a bunch of unadulterated horniness from a character like Master Roshi. Schneider is such a wild main character because he is so cocky, full of himself, he's rude, overbearing, and like I said, he's probably the horniest motherfucker in manga. And I know that's quite the statement to say considering how many manga pervs are out there, but this guy takes the gold medal. I think even more so because Schneider, instead of just being this weird creep as most perverted manga characters tend to be, is actually presented as an incredibly alpha character that a bunch of girls are attracted to almost immediately. If there were ever a male power fantasy manga character to look up to, it is Dark Schneider. Don't get me wrong, Schneider does get his ass kicked from time to time from ladies like Yoko who hasn't come to terms with wanting to lose her virginity yet, but girls like Princess Sheila and, and even this half-elf character Arshes are all about him. But that gets even weirder because of how non-human characters have very long lifespans and, well, Arshes was kind of raised by Dark Schneider like a daughter, but then grew up and now she wants to totally bone him. Uh, as in, like, help me stepfather, I'm stuck in the dryer type of boning. But it's not just her. So many people want to fuck Dark Schneider, and Dark Schneider very adamantly does most of what he does in order to get laid and build a harem. So I went along with this, this over-the-top perverted humor and fan service. Yeah, there's a ton of fan service. All these girls are drawn with exaggeratedly perfect busty figures. Not that I was complaining, but they're all hot, and they all want to smash. <laughs> but it wasn't until I got to this one specific scene where I realized that this was the kind of manga I was reading. Dark Schneider gets poisoned, conveniently stabbed just above his dick, and he rips off his clothes asking Princess Sheila to suck out his poison. 
in which she happily does so in these images that are obviously meant to imply that this is a sloppy toppy. It was at this point that I realized that this was not going to be a dark fantasy epic like Berserk, but instead was just going to be an over-the-top comedic sexy fun time story not meant to be taken seriously. And so I redirected my mind into that zone for some time and did have a lot of fun with this series once I got into that. Now a lot of the narratives from this point on kind of went the same way. There would be some antagonist that knew Schneider in his past and they would have a vendetta against him. Also, there would be a variety of mythological creatures. There would be vampires and werewolves, elvish beings, magical wizards, and a whole bunch of variety within them. Now, as it's presented towards the beginning, you think there is going to be a lot of plot threads involving Dark Schneider and the boy whom he shares a body with named Luce, because at times Schneider turns back into the boy. And because the boy loves the character Yoko, well, Schneider also develops deeper affection for her other than just wanting to bang. But he still really wants to bang her. But after the first dozen or so chapters, they kind of eliminate this plot and Luce pretty much never shows up again except for extremely rare occasions until near the end during the final bit of this manga where he becomes pretty much completely different than how he was introduced, but that's another story. The battle scenes during the first half of this manga also are fun and visually appealing to look at, not nearly as much as they would be towards the later half of this manga, but reading the tone and vibe of this manga, honestly, the battle scenes got very repetitive and boring very quickly, and I was honestly waiting for them to end so that we would see more of the Schneider being a hilarious perv moments. That's kind of where the first half of this manga really shines the most, in the absolute absurd humor of his Chad-like ways. There were some really funny over-the-top moments, and to the point where I almost couldn't believe this was actually a shonen manga, considering some of the explicit material that was shown here. There's also an ongoing plot thread of a group of antagonists wanting to resurrect this gigantic demon called Anthrax that once supposedly was responsible for wiping out most of the planet. Seems moderately deep for such a silly manga, right? <laughs> well, you have no idea. Here's where I have to mildly spoil the plot just a bit in order to talk about the second half of this manga because it is virtually unrecognizable from the first half. I have never seen a manga take such an abrupt shift in tone, lore, and even genre as I have with Bastard. So the first half of the story is within the setting that you would expect of a medieval dark fantasy. But then we learn that this world actually is far into the future of what we know of Earth. This isn't the medieval past, but a future society rebuilt after the devastation of the Anthrax monster. But not only that, but all of a sudden the story decides to throw in a ton of lore and exposition taking inspiration from the Bible and makes this a heaven versus hell sci-fi devil man style extravaganza that just goes completely apeshit. There's technology that's thrown in, reveals of angels and demons, Satan shows up at one point. I don't even know how we got to this point, but the manga becomes literally unrecognizable from the early portions and at times I wondered if I was even reading the same manga. It begins to take things really seriously, spouting tons of exposition about the nature of humanity and if humans are doomed to damnation by the evil inside of them, and it gets all into this existential crisis about God and the devil, good and evil, and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> all of a sudden, we are in space and there's satellites and angels and giant explosions and world-destroying events and mutations into Dark Schneider becoming something else and then I lost track of the plot at one point and I had no idea what was happening and I, I don't know where half the characters disappeared to and I don't know what the fuck this thing is and where this story was going and why we are talking about God so much and just, I, I don't know what happened. But, all the while we get this freaking godly artwork of panels and pages, and seriously, this, this artwork is just out of this world. The artwork during this portion of the story is the main reason that I kept reading. I really found this story to be a struggle to get through because it felt like a combination of being too pretentious, but also not making any sense, at least not to me. I, maybe I was too stupid to understand it and it's Evangelion style transition, but I have to be honest, there were multiple chapters where I just had no idea what the hell was going on, and I wasn't attached enough to the characters or the story to want to bother reading the chapter three to four times until I understood it. So instead, I just went along for the ride, enjoyed the beautiful artwork along the way, and that's what pushed me to finish it. 
Well, that and wanting to make this review to try to explain what I was feeling the entire time. Luce the boy does come back at one point, also changing and adding in a bunch of lore to his story and giving him a little bit more relevance than he had in the first half, but then he just kind of disappears again. And all the while, Yoko is just sort of along for the ride. Actually, a lot of the characters from the early portion of this manga get pushed to the back burner, and I kind of forget where they were half the time. After a while of this angels wiping out the humanity plotline and Dark Schneier being sent to hell, there's a time skip which makes things even more confusing and my comprehension of the story grew less and less. There's just pages upon pages of intense battle sequences between a powered up Dark Schneider and demons and I wish, I wish that I cared more about what I was looking at because what I'm looking at is fucking amazing. But the story had me lost by this point and I just didn't care. I was never worried or concerned for Dark Schneider because he's too perfect of a character. He was never really in danger. I felt more anxiety for Kenshiro in Fist of the North Star than I did for Schneider. Oh, and if you're wondering if Schneider is still perverted in the second half, well, right towards the end, he literally defeats a female antagonist by making her orgasm into submission, literally parodying Fist of the North Star as he does it. You are already dead. <laughs> More like, you have already come. I'm sorry, just, just ignore me. Also, this manga doesn't really have an ending, as the final chapter is continued, and though the series has not officially ended, there has not been a chapter since 2012. Yeah, add this to the Berserk Vagabond Hunter Hunter pile, I guess. So, overall, I, I don't know how I feel about this one. I, I don't even know if I can recommend it. I preferred the sexual comedy of the first half more than anything, to be honest, and I loved the artwork during the final epic battle scenes in the second half, but I feel like I read two different mangas in one and neither of them were fully satisfying, and neither connected very well to the other, other than just Dark Schneider himself being there, and I honestly didn't care that much about any of the other characters. I guess I call Bastard what the kids say, mid. It's, it's very mid. But if you want something wild, ridiculous, hilarious, and confusing as hell, then hey, check out Bastard. Anyway, thank you for watching this video guys, I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you think about Bastard in the comments below if you have read it, and if you have not, are you considering it, what did you think of the review, let me know all that down below. Please like the video and comment because it will help me in the YouTube algorithm, I'd very very much appreciate it. And check out the description of this video for my Patreon and merch store, and various social media links where you can follow me. Other than that guys, I hope you have a wonderful day, and if you don't mind, can you please suck out my poison?